The European Gypsy Moth by Allie Kaplan and Nikki DiBenedetto. An invasive species is a plant, fungus, or animal species that is not native to a specific location, which has a tendency to spread to a degree believed to cause damage to the environment, human economy, or human health. An example of an invasive species is the European Gypsy Moth. The European Gypsy Moth was accidentally introduced in Boston in the late 1860s by E. Leopold Truvelot. It was not until 10 years later that the moths began to dominate ecological communities. Both state and federal governments took action in 1890 in order to stop the spread of the moths. However, their actions have failed and the organism has continued to cause destruction ever since. Non-native species are species that have been introduced into new areas that have not historically been part of their native range. The difference between non-native species and invasive species are that non-native species usually do not cause any harm and can sometimes even be beneficial. They also do not disrupt the natural ecosystem processes, as opposed to invasive species, which, have a, which are a small category of non-native species that are harmful to a community. They also displace the native species living there and negatively impact ecology, economy, human health, or other way of life. A keystone species holds a community together, and when it disappears, so does the biological community. Without the specific species, a community is not able to function properly. In other words, this one type of organism is the glue of a whole community, keeping it from falling apart. An example of a keystone species is a jaguar. European gypsy moths have very distinct characteristics. The moths have yellowish white wings with dark wavy lines and dots. A moth can be identified by its hairy thorax, fat abdomen, and thread-like antennae. What is interesting about this species is that males and females do not look the same. On the left, we have a male gypsy moth. Males are only three quarters of an inch long with plain brownish-gray bodies and feathery antennae. On the other hand, the moth on the right displays what a female moth would look like. Female moths are more often seen due to their larger size of two and a half inches long and their inability to fly. The gypsy moth is known for feeding on a variety of plants in North America. However, its most common hosts are oak and aspen trees. Their hosts are located all over the United States but can be most commonly found in the Great Lake states, southern Appalachian Mountains, and Ozark Mountains. If there isn't an end put to the spreading of gypsy moths, they can potentially put certain types of plants at risk. This is due to the fact that the moth caterpillars feed on tree leaves, and without the leaves, native species are left with no habitat or food source, thus decreasing the biodiversity. As shown by this picture, the European gypsy moth dominates the northeast of the United States. In the states such as New York, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, and Connecticut, larvae and egg masses are present. In Maine, Florida, Virginia, and Ohio, scientists have found masses of adult male moths while single adult males have been found scattered all over the country. While a majority of the nation has not been deeply affected by the European gypsy moths, it is clear the species has taken home in the Northeast. In late April, the gypsy moth caterpillars emerge and feed on many different types of trees and shrubs, including oaks, aspen, basswood, birch, and willows. These caterpillars consume an immense amount of leaves, which can leave a tree entirely bare. The moths can be so destructive that they sometimes strip an entire section of a forest of leaves, known as defoliation, thus destroying the habitats of many native species. When these habitats are destroyed, a large amount of biodiversity is destroyed, and therefore the stability of the ecosystem is ruined. To add, without the leaves, a tree is unable to perform photosynthesis, which turns carbon dioxide into glucose. This is a threat because without this process, less and less oxygen is pumped into the atmosphere, which is vital for human life. To add, the increased amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere due to decreased photosynthesis is a direct cause of global warming, which can eventually wipe out the whole planet. There is a lot that humans can do in order to prevent a further invasion of the European gypsy moth. If ever experimenting with this species, or any species for that matter, experimenters need to take more caution. They need to be sure that there is no way these moths can escape or be released into nature. When traveling from country to country, Border Protection Services make sure to ask if any new wildlife form is being brought in. This is asked so that invasive species cannot be brought out of their ecological community and into one in which it does not belong. To add, in order to prevent the spread of marine organisms, boats should be cleaned so that they do not carry 
organisms from one body of water to the next. 